All right, I'm here with the last video. This is the video covering Shaman, Warlock, and Warrior. So, as I mentioned before, Shaman got probably the strongest neutral card, or sorry, the strongest card of like all like the non-legendary class cards, probably even all cards here in Giant Tumbleweed as one of their strongest cards. But they also got a fairly strong set. So, overall, I think Shaman's set is so strong that my prediction is that there is going to be a big three of Death Knight, Mage, and Shaman, then there's going to be Warrior kind of like right behind them in a kind of like a nebulous area. They might be like encroaching on the top. I don't think they'll actually make it, but they will be close. But those will be like the top four by far. So Death Knight, Mage, Shaman, and then Warrior. So anyway, let's get into the cards here. All right. Oops, I forgot to bring this back up here. Okay, card number one is Dehydrate. Nope, not that one. Dehydrate right here, Life Steal, deal four damage to a minion, quick draw, cost one. So I compare this to uh, Cord. Cord. Uh, I forget the exact name for this one. Altered Cord. Altered Cord, five mana, Life Steal, deal six damage, cost two. If you're overloaded. So for this. Uh, it's going to be harder to quick draw. Than it is going to be the overload. You're going to get probably better damage per mana. For this. Uh, but overall I think just really solid card. This is a 3 star card. Next one here. Living Prairie. Living Prairie, 5 mana, 5, 4. If you played an element last turn, summon 2, 3, 3 cows with Rush. First thought is Tainted Remnant. You compare this to Tainted Remnant. Remnant is a 7, 4 versus a 5, 4. This is 6 damage. Sorry, 7 damage versus 2, 3, 3s. So you get similar, more controlled removal, but you get less, a lot less face damage and you get a lot less of a, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, board presence for uh, the 7, 4. So I would say worse than Tainted Remnant, which is like about a mid-70s card. So I would say it is 60s. So a little bit worse is this, which is 60s, which is three stars. Cactus Cutter. Let's get, yeah, let's get a bad stuff out of the way. Let's get a Cactus Cutter. Two mana, two, two, draw a spell. If you cast it this turn, gain plus one, plus two, and taunt. So two mana, two, two, draw a card is good. You play it, you get a 3-4 taunt. That's good, and that's a late-game situation. So, overall, very good card. Four-star card. I mean, that's basically what a uh, 2-2 draw spell is. Minecart Crusher. 3-mana, 4-5, rush, overload 2. Battlecry, if you played an elemental last turn, don't overload. Alright, so, this is bad to coin out on 2 Unless you play like an elemental on what? On three, you play this and you get to remove something, and then you get to play a uh, two drop on turn four. Uh, if you don't have an, el if you don't, if you don't overload, then you get three mana four five. But that's going to be mostly in the mid game. Maybe if you play like a Nimbus on two into this, like that's obviously the dream. So I'd say it's around that level of a Trog Exile or so. Just because, just because a, a four five rush is that good, so overall I would say four star card. Giant tumbleweed. Seven stars. Moving on. Amphibious elixir. Restore 5 health, discover a spell. So, this is comparable to... Paladin has the... Um, it's 2 mana. I forget the exact name of it. So, you can say in one hand, it's like that. Where it's like 2 mana, flash of light. Uh, but this is discover a spell. And discover a spell is extremely good. Because, hey, what do you get with discover a spell? You can get... <clears throat> this... So, overall, I think that's really useful. I think... I probably overrated this. I think 66 is better than 76 here. I think it's a 3-star rather than a 4-star. 
I think I compared it to the wrong thing. Walking Mountain. Because if you forget, we had Walking Fountain. Where's Walking Fountain? Walking Fountain right here is 98. 8 mana, 4, 8, Life Steal, Rush, Wind Fury. Walking Mountain. 9 mana, 4, 16, Rush, Steel, Rush, Life Steal, Mega Wind Fury. So plus 1 mana, make, so you get Wind Fury and Mega Wind Fury and plus 8, and then you'll overload 2 as well. And Okay, so you can play this. If your opponent cannot remove it, then your opponent just deals 16 to you. So obviously this is an insane card. Better than Walking Mountain. Like you can't... It, it does the same thing. It's a massive board clear. It's potential just win the game if it lives. It's healing. It's basically an absolutely insane card. It's a card you're always going to want to draft. I'm going to say that it's a six-star card. I have it as, yeah, six stars. Trusty Companion. Give a minion plus two plus three. If it has a minion type, draw one of that type. All right, so... Most minions, you're going to have minion types. Are you going to have a second one to draw? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. So with this, it's still a good buff. It's still a draw. And there are times where maybe you can draw a card, but it's better to play this just because of the trade that you get off on this. So overall, I would say that this one is a three-star card. It's just like a very solid buff. Scar the Catastrophe, going on to Legendary, Legendary number one. Deal one damage to all enemies, improved each turn in a row, you've played an Elemental. So by itself, 7-7-7, seven seven, seven, deal one damage, that's fine, that's good. That's comparable to like a Primordial Tree. And Primordial, like we look at, uh, where's Primordial Tree? Primordial Drake is 8 damage, 8 mana, 4-8 Taunt. This is a 7-7-7, seven mana seven, seven, deal one. So all you need is one elemental for this to be better than Primordial Drake, like without Taunt, but it's still going to be a really good card. And then for two mana, uh, so if he gets up to two, that's great. If you can get up to three, you can get up to four. That's also potential in there. So overall, I think that this is... I think that you're going to have a little trouble with that. So I should put this at like a four-star card. Because Primordial Drake is five, but I think Primordial Drake is a little bit overrated. So I'm going to just say that here it's about a 4-star card. And then the last card of the set, Doc Holiday. So if your deck has no duplicates, summon the Staff of Nine Frogs. What is the Staff of Nine Frogs? Staff of Nine Frogs is a 5-mana 2-9 weapon. After hero attacks, summon a 1-1 frog with taunt. Each frog is bigger than the last. So basically, you just keep hitting him in the face. You keep summoning a bigger frog. So it starts slow but eventually you are just going to win you are just going to get nine frogs so it's another one of these it's another one of these cards like that have a legendary that just basically if you have no duplicates you get kind of like massive 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 card advantage on your opponent not infinite technically like druid or paladin but close because if nine turns later you have not won this game that is weird so I think I think I underrate the slowness is I think why I rated it so low. And that's why I think I have it as a three star card because it takes a long time to get there. But if you do get there, then it can be absolutely insane. And like also it doesn't have like the necessarily immediate impact that the the Paladin one is incredible because it's on curve. The Druid one is incredible because dragons are just absolutely insane. This it just takes a long time to like actually get going. So I could be underrating this. This could be a lot better, especially because you can uh, control it. Actually, you know what? Because I forgot that... I'll say this is four stars because remember, I scored this before I knew it would be your first pick. And if this is the first pick, you can draft around. It's the Reno problem is not as big of a problem. So, overall, Shaman had a great set with their lowest... the worst card being a 2-mana two 2-3 two, buff that draws a card. So as I said... Overall, insane set. I think Shaman is in a great position. Next one is Warlock. So, before Priest and... Uh, how would I say this? I thought Priest and Rogue 
were kind of, like I feel that they the set is a negative towards them. The meta is negative towards them. Warlock, I think either one of the ways that they win is to try to outvalue people, but they just can't do that anymore. Uh, they, it's like, why is the what is the purpose of using your hero power to get card advantage if people never run out of cards? So the set encourages oh the set encourages uh one thing here, and I'm gonna I forget is this the first card I have in here? All right, so I'll just go into it. It's not that one. That is the reason. But it encourages a heavy aggro set. And I think this is viable. And this is something I'm going to work in. Okay. So we'll start with this one here. Disposable Assistant, 2 mana, 3 2, Battle Cry and Death Rattle. Put a Barrel of Sludge on the bottom of your deck. What is a Barrel of Sludge? When this is played, discarded, or destroyed, deal 3 damage to the lowest health minion. So you put 2 Barrels of Sludge on the bottom of your deck. Okay, so it's a two mana card that puts stuff on there. Uh, that so it's a two mana card. It puts stuff at the bottom of your deck that you're never ever ever going to use until you get to fatigue. So why the hell do I have it here as a three star card as rather than a two star card? Well, because the next card, which is also common, is Waste Remover. At the end of your turn, destroy the bottom three cards of your deck. So, you play this on two, you play this on four. It's basically a four mana, seven, seven. So it's got Fell Reaver ability. And if you've got those Barrel of Sludges, then it's going to destroy those two Barrels of Sludges, and it's going to deal three damage to whatever has the lowest health. So it's a four mana, seven, seven, that just dealt six damage to either minions on the board or the face. And then your opponent has to answer it. And maybe they can answer it, but you've already in you're already in an extremely good spot. So basically the package here is encouraging this uh this warlock where you play a bunch of four mana seven sevens, you draft as many of these as you can, draft as many cards that put barrels on the bottom of your deck as I can, and then go face and just try to win that way. So this by itself is a five star card. Is this gonna work? I'm not sure. But I do think, like, even without the barrels, uh, if you're going for an aggro strategy, this is the kind of card you want. Next one here, Furnace Fuel, which is the other... Where is it? When this card is played, discard, or destroyed, it draws you cards. Four mana, so it's going to be hard to... Okay, so four mana, this is going to be hard to like discard like as like lowest cost spell or something like that. There are discarded spell cards, but sure. So it's in that nebulous. It's not It's not too low and it's not too high. So you can't really discard that way. Uh, destroyed, maybe if it's on the bottom of your deck, but there's no real way to do it. And then play, it's four mana, draw two cards. And that's bad for Warlock. So I have it as borderline two stars. It's not. This is not a card you want to get. Moarg Drill Fist. So... In addition to this, Warlock also has an incredible Excavate, probably the second best after the Mage one. And why? Let's take a look here. Morg Drill Fist, 4 mana, 4, 5, Taunt, Death Rattle, Excavated Treasure. 4 mana, 4, 5, Taunt, get a card that's like um, the Primordial, Time Lost Drake, Proto Drake or whatever, and instead of a random dragon, if you draw it, that you get Death Rattle Excavated Treasure. So this is really good. You want 4 mana 4 5 taunts. 4 mana 4 5 taunts are great. You want to excavate, and I'll show you later. So excavate is great. So I would say comparable to Proto Drake, which is a 5 star card. Sludge on Reels, what, blah, blah, blah. Rush. Whenever this takes damage, get a barrel of sludge and add one to the bottom of your deck. So it's a 3 mana 1 5 rush. When it takes damage, draw generate a card, which is a barrel of sludge, plus add one to the bottom of your deck so that, for example, the waste remover can be used to do that. That's good. I'd say it's comparable to Acolyte of Pain. Uh, like if you've got weight, I, it's comparable to Acolyte of Pain. I would say for that. Now, why do I have it as only two stars? What? Where's Acolyte of Pain? In? Let me see here. All right. Oh, yeah, here. The reason is that I compared it to Acolyte of Pain, but Acolyte of Pain is down here because Warlock doesn't really need it. 
So this is one of those cards. If you've got waste removers, this goes up in value. If you don't, it's still a three mana one five rush, which is still pretty weak. So that's the reason I have it as two stars. I was trying to think because I'm talking to myself. I think it should be better, but no. No, I kind of agree with this now. Fracking. Next card. Look at the bottom three cards of your deck. Draw one and destroy the others. Because do you remember tracking? Do you remember tracking? Do you see how there's an F here instead of a T and in the text? Like every single T is turned into an F. Fracking, tracking, ha, 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 ha. Same thing. Same thing, plus it's got the whole uh, destroy the others. So if you've got the barrels, you can destroy the barrels, uh, clear the board. That's obviously good. All right, so three stars. Let's move on. Trolley problem. It's trolley problem. Discard your lowest cost spell. Summon two, three through tram cards with rush. Quick draw, don't discard. So three mana, discard a spell, get two, three threes with rush. So you discard a, so a three three with rush is fine. Uh, discard a spell for a second three three with rush is okay. This is obviously meant to work with the barrels, where you have the barrels in your hand, you discard the barrels, the barrels deal damage to something, and you got the three threes. And then of course there is a rush where you can just not discard it, which works sometimes, I guess. So overall, what would I say about this? This is a good card. This is a three star card. Uh, it's a little too. Like, this card is going to hurt, and you aren't always going to have the barrels, but overall, good card. Next one, smoke smack, smoke Stack. <laughs> Deal one damage to a minion. If it dies, excavated treasure. We've got Mortal Coil exists. Like, where's Mortal Coil? Mortal Coil exists. There's the one that uh, gets you Mortal... I, I forget the name of the card. I just played it. It's deal one, summon a 2-2 two, two with a bonus effect. I forget the name of that one off the top of my head. I was just playing with it in one of my runs. I forget the name of that. Okay. Point being, there's another card where it's like deal one damage, summon a 2-2 two, two, uh, for that. I forget what that is. That's probably going to be around this range. So, better mortal coil plus excavate. You want to excavate, so four star card. Tram Conductor Jerry. If you've excavated twice, summon six 3-3 three, three tram cars with Rush. Alright. So here, if you've excavated twice, so you need to draw the excavate cards and play them twice. I mean, both of them are pretty good. The neutrals are pretty good. So this is not an uh, unreliable thing. And if you do that twice, you get six 3-3 three, three tram cars to be able to basically just clear whatever board this is. This is a great card. So, I mean, this is something you're going to have. Like, uh, this is something you're going to have. Like, if this hits, this is like one of the strongest cards. And so you hold this until it hits. This is, I'm going to just say six star cards here. Popgar the Putrid. Four mana, two, six. Your, your fell, spiel, sp fell spells cost one less and have life steal. Battle cry, gain two barrels of sludge. So you can play this on four, or you can play this on six. You get the uh, barrels of sludge, and you get to play two barrels of sludge. You, so you get to de uh, deal six damage to a random thing. You get to heal for six. That is the bare minimum. Uh, four mana, two si uh, sorry, six mana, deal six damage, uh, heal for six, and then you have the bonus effect there. That's the bare minimum. That's great. That's a five star card. So. And then also, there's if, if you play any other discard cards that discard Barrels of Sludge, that's going to be great. And then finally, we got the uh, treasure here, the Azurite Snake. Battle cry, your hero steals 10 health from the enemy hero. So if your hero is at 30 health, or sorry, if your hero is at 10 health and the enemy hero is at 20 health, you play this, the enemy hero is now at 10 health and your hero is at 20 health. And the enemy hero cannot heal above the 20 health maximum. So this is a Pyroblast with Lifesteal attached to this. And oh, remember, you can bounce it. So if, you get a bounce, so if you're going for an Excavate deck, you look for bounces so that you can just repeatedly Pyroblast your opponent in the face with this. And you excavate enough, they're not going to be able to stop you. So this is why you want to build around 
and excavate deck. All right, that is Warlock. So now the last class that we have here is Warrior. And Warrior, one of the things that infuriated me the most about the last couple of metas was how many giant unanswerable boards that there just were in Arena. And so Warrior is basically the class that just says, in, in this set, you know what? Draft every single taunt you see, and then buff every single taunt you see, and then create a giant unanswerable board. That's basically what Warrior is going to do. All right. And we'll start off with the destination, sorry, detonation juggernaut right here. Taunt battle cry, give your taunt minions in your hand plus two parts plus two. For reference, Warrior has a legendary. That legendary's name is Armageddon. Armageddon is a uh, six mana four eight. At the end of your turn, give all taunt minions in your hand plus two plus two. So this is it's not a repeatable effect, but it is a one time effect. And Armageddon usually never lived more than one time. So that's one thing. So it's a little bit worse for stats. 5 mana 3, 6 versus a uh, 6 mana 4, 8. And it's a little bit worse in terms of like the initial effect. But this is a common. You're going to see this a lot. So you have taunts. You hold the taunts. You play this. Your taunts are super buffed. And then it becomes a lot harder for the opponents to deal with. So this is a really good card. I'm going to say... Oh, yeah, and it comes out a turn earlier. So, four-star card. Battle Pick X. Three mana, four, one. After you play a taunt minion, gain one durability. I'm going to make a check because I have... I I, I did this well before uh, the sets were announced. So, I want to check because here's my issue with Warrior. My issue with Warrior is that often you just get a massive glute of weapons where you get stuck and you have way too many weapons. And so it's like on turn four, you have this, you have Outrider's Axe, you have Sword Eater, and they are all weapons that you want to uh, play on curve. So here, looking at the cards, you got Anchor, which probably, I guess that would be good if you can build a deck around it. Woodcutter's Axe, and Ritual Chopper, I don't, is not an arena. Brass Knuckles, which is eh, I probably don't play that. Livewire Lance, which is really good. Craftsman's Hammer is really good. So, in theory, you play this, and uh, it's going to be insane because you can get infinite durability on it. The problem is, if you play this on turn 3, you don't want to play this. You don't want to use this on turn 3 because you want to play a taunt to buff it. So, that really hurts. It. So, okay, there's less weapons. So, it is better than this. I, it's going to be probably a lower-end 3-star card. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a higher-end 3-star card. Like, I have it here as a low-end 3-star card, and that's mostly because, like, I was expecting it to be a bigger weapon glute. There isn't. and But it's still slow because you need to play a taunt to activate this. So it's a little bit weird here. Next one here, what we've got, we've got Shield Block. No, sorry, not Shield Block. Reinforced Plating. But it's Shield Block in name anyway. Gain 6 armor, get a card. So compared to the Shield Block, it's one mana more to excavate versus get a treasure. That's a three-star card for this. Uh, excavate synergy, I would rate it higher than shield block just because of that, because this is one of your only excavate cards. So you want those excavate cards. Blast Tortoise. Six mana, two, some taunt, deal the damage to all enemy minions equal to this minion's attack. We've had cards like this before. There was the Priest. It was a 3-7 Undying Disciple or something along those lines. Yeah, Undying Disciple. But Warrior has a lot more hand buff and hand synergy stuff with this. So because of all of that, that's why I have it higher than that, which would be a 3-star card. So you play this, you get to blow up your opponent's board, especially if it gets uh, buffed and your opponents will get annoyed. So if it's by itself as a 2-7, that's actually kind of mediocre because the opponents can just trade off or trade around to handle this. But yeah, this is one of those cards that needs the buffs in order to be useful. All right, Unlucky Powderman is going to be kind of like the linchpin of your Taunt deck. Taunt, Death Rattle, give Taunt minions in your hand and deck. Plus one, plus one. So 
you play this, and that Blast Tortoise that's somewhere in the middle of your deck becomes a 3-8. That's great. That Azerite Chain Gang, that's a 2-3, becomes a 3-4. You play Powder Man on 2 into Powder Man on 3 into Azerite Chain Gang on 4 that you just drew, and you've got three five sixes that you get to play on 4. This is going to be the card that's going to be the kind of like linchpin of a Taunt Warrior because it buffs everything. So if you take every single Taunt, eventually, you and you play this enough, eventually you're just going to buff all your stuff to the points the opponents can't deal with it. So I think this is a really good card. I think this is a four-star card. I compare it, like, in, in comparison, I'd say it's better than Grime Street Outfitter. But I think this is a card that justifies playing a Taunt deck. Blast Charge, rare, three mana, destroy damage, enemy minion, excavate treasure. So execute, execute plus draw a card. I think the two mana is worth it enough for that. It's plus the excavate synergy. So that's four stars. Misfire. To a random minion, choose the targets here. So if you quick draw this, this is kind of like a two mana star power. If you don't quick draw this, this is a two mana minefield. I mean, both of those two mana minefield is fine. Three stars is fine. Like obviously, you do want to try to quick draw it. Badlands Brawler, seven mana four four. Start a brawl. If you excavate it twice, this always wins. So uh, start a brawl. Like basically, this is a soul stealer or like the Death Knight eight mana five five that gives you a complete board clear. This is the same thing, but you've had to excavate twice. And I think excavate twice is actually going to happen. So I think this is pretty reliable. Is it as good as Soul Stealer? Not close, but it's still going to be a four star card. I think this will work. Last one here, Boom Boss. Oh sorry, let's first legendary here. Boom Boss the Groom. Eight mana seven seven shuffle three TNT into your deck when drawn blow up a card in enemy hand deck and battlefield. So if you've got a complete control deck about just basically uh, continually generating armor, continually making trades, continually just removing everything, then this is a great card because this will eventually deal uh, handle nine cards by yourself. That's eventually. It's still extremely slow when it comes down. So that's why I have it as low three stars. I think there's something there. But I'm not sure. And finally, the last card here. Slagma the Slumbering. 4 mana 16 rush taunt. 4 mana 16 rush. Sorry. 4 minute rush taunt. 16 16. Insane stats. Dormant for 8 turns. Excavate to awaken 2 turns sooner. Alright. So you have to play this. So it does not work if it's in your deck. You play this and then you have to keep on excavating. So my in general napkin math, math blah, napkin math for dormant is that you every you take the mana cost and you multiply it by the number of turns that you are dormant and you have the expected value. So an example of this is uh, rhythm and roots. That's the druid spell. That's four mana, which is effectively dormant for two turns and then get three five fives. So you that's four mana. And the dormant is going to be for two turns. So four times you would expect eight mana worth of value. And then you get 15-15, uh, which is 16 mana worth of value. So that is a great card. Here, eight turns is really, really, really long. And so that's going to be, you would expect like 32 mana worth of value. And this is really 16. So this is a bad card. This is like, you would need a, an extremely heavy excavate deck to even try to justify this. So that's what I'm thinking. I don't think you can justify this, which is why I have it as a one-star card. And then last card here, the Azerite, Ax, the Azerite Ox, which is your reward for excavating. Battlecry, discover two eight-cost minions, summon them. So good card because it gives you a lot of board pressure on that. Is it a great card? Eh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I think definitely the Snake and the Hawk are much better. This is good, definitely. I would say it's better than the rat, just because uh, the eight cost minions are going to be more powerful than one single minion, 
and definitely better than the Scorpion. Is it worth building your entire deck to excavate around this? I'm not really sure. And that's basically where I am. All right. Those are all the cards. Sometime later in the week, I might do just like a quick rundown of the uh, Caverns of Time because I do not think we've had that. I'm not going to do like any like in-depth review of it. Just go over some of the cards. All right. So uh, if this is the last time you're watching a video of mine because I'm giving up on Arena, thank you for watching all my videos. Thank you for being in Arena and making it a something to do, something for me to do. All right. So take care of everybody.